show. Wait, she's coming back on you. You are tuned into the Bianca Burwell Show on the B. Josh Radio, your top 40 pop and R&B station. And we are sitting here with Chong Kim. And we're talking about modern day slavery, human trafficking. And if you haven't been listening all this time, I don't know what y'all been listening to. Because um, all the things that, that she's been sharing have just been phenomenal. And, you know, I really want to say... Basically, you're talking about survival, mm-hmm. you know, with, uh, especially if you were like me and just, I'm, I'm being educated right now, you know, on a lot of things that, that have taken place. And I just really want to tell you, I really appreciate, appreciate you, you you coming on the show. Thank Definitely. you for having me. You know, especially that last minute, can you come over? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> can you come now? <laughs> well, I applaud you for bringing me because there's a lot of media, schools, churches that will say no. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to know about it. Why? I That's crazy. You not, I kid you not. That is. You need to know exactly what's going on. You know, ignorance is not an excuse. Exactly. You know, it just really isn't. You know, um, matter of fact, the police remind us of that. <laughs> you know, if you're driving down the street and they, they pull you over and you're like, do you know how fast you were going? No, I didn't see a sign. That's no excuse of ignorance of the law. You know you would. You know what I'm saying? I'm, exactly. I'm just, just saying. <laughs> we get reminded how. <laughs> exactly. So, exactly. yeah, I, I just wanted to say that. And, again, the calling number is 404-826-9223. I see folks tuned in. I usually look and see what, what continents they're on because we are a global, uh, you know, medium. And a lot of people from all over. We're in over 80 countries uh, wow. listen uh, to the show. So, I just, okay, roll it back, roll it back. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, you know, um, while you were held captive, what type of, of facilities were you and the other girls, you know, uh, kept in? And, and did you even know where you were? The first um, night, I didn't know. Um, when we were taken to an abandoned warehouse for distribution, mm. and it had multiple floors. And so each unit held the children. And here's the crazy part. We're on an Indian reservation. Really? Yes. And what a lot of people don't realize, it is more difficult for an FBI agent to prosecute crime on an Indian reservation. They need the tribal laws to collaborate with them. Oh, that's crazy. So they know exactly where to go to... I'm, exactly. st- I, I'm stuck on distribution. So y'all were really like, like human factory. Just, just yeah, human factory. That's wow. what it is. That's what it's turned to. Human trade. Do you hear this? Yes. Yes. I, I'm that's, just. That's I'm sorry. I'm. I'm. I'm just. Um. I don't even know how to react to some of this. You know. Um. And it still goes on. Yes. Today. And that's why I was shocked that it was on American soil. When I woke up in that storage storage unit, I literally thought I was in the third world country, like Israel or somewhere Mm. in Africa or somewhere in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. But the moment that they put us in a warehouse truck to transport us from state to state and then on a minivan with no windows within the state. And I remember when the trafficker told me, even though you're 19, you look younger. So I want you to pretend to be a 14-year-old Japanese girl. Don't speak any English. Don't say anything. So the first hunter, I call them, Mm. that came into the room, I said, I'm an American girl. I'm not Japanese. I I speak English. If you call the police, I'll tell them that you rescued me. And he, I remember those big flip phones. That you yeah, pulled the yeah. antenna. Mm-hmm. He pulled that out. He said, "I want my five grand back." <gasps> yes. Oh, are you kidding? So my first punishment was, I got put in a claw foot porcelain bathtub, naked, filled up with ice to my neck. Mm. Golly. Mm. Yeah, you. That was my that was my next question. I'm glad you you, you know 
Can you tell us uh, 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 any other situations that, you know, because I know some people that are listening and then some people that are watching are wondering, you know, what are the some of the things that you, because we all submit until a point mm -hmm. that it's like, okay, I'm going to do until, and you're constantly figuring a way out. Yes. As soon as I'm able to get a break, you know, as soon as they walk away or whatever it is, you know, were there any other instances that took place, like maybe publicly or privately that you tried to escape and, and they let you know you're not going anywhere? Um, there's been, well, in the storage unit, it was almost impossible to even ask for help because everybody that was in it knew about it, even the customers. None of those customers were naive. That they, even if they thought we chose to prostitute ourselves or whatever they thought in their mind, mm -hmm. they didn't care. These were married men, so they didn't want to get caught. Right. So the best way to do it was to grab the girl and send her back to her trafficker. But I do want to share something. Please. When I met the boyfriend and he had me in an abandoned house before I was trafficked, I was in the northern part of Oklahoma at that time. Hmm. Hmm. I had been handcuffed for two weeks. Hadn't showered. Hmm. Hadn't, well, I was using the bathroom, but I soiled on myself because hmm. I was handcuffed. Right. So I'm doing outside. Couldn't get, go to the bathroom, right? Hmm. So it was approximately, I think it was about a week or two weeks. So he said, we need to go somewhere. So he said, before I take the handcuffs off, do not scream. Do not yell. Do not run. Hmm. He said, nobody will care. And I didn't believe him. That was my ignorance hmm. as an American citizen, right? Because right. we're thinking, we're America. Right. We're going to send the Red Cross. We're going to be there. We're going to send hmm. whatever they call it, you know? Right. Um, well, the moment the handcuffs came off, I ran hmm. as fast as I could. I went to a shopping mall hmm. where there were other people. But what I didn't realize was that I smelled. Mm. People couldn't stand to be near me. Mm. I was walking to a woman. I was like, help me, help me. He's going to kill me. And she yanked her uh, arm away from me. Mm. People were like, I saw parents grabbing their kids away from me. Mm. They thought I was the bad guy. Wow. Then here mm. comes the recruiter in a uniform outfit. He walks in, grabs me by the hair, and drags me out the door. And even the security looked at him and saluted to him. What? As if, thank you for taking out the trash. Are you kidding? Mm. I'm not kidding. Mm. 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 There is a YouTube. If you go on YouTube, I don't know what what the name of it is. I'll look for it and I'll send it to you so you can post on your site. Yes. But it was recently in 2010. It was a dad who had a 14-year-old daughter. He went to the pimp's house to get his 14-year-old daughter. And the pimps had his girls get crowbars and beat him. Mm. He called 911, and 911 said it's not important. And it was taped on CNN. What? Because one of the mo one of the neighbors had a camera phone, and she taped it and submitted it to CNN. Mm. Yeah, nobody came to his rescue. He was bludgeoningly to death. Mm. Uh, well, he didn't die, but... He was oh. bludgeoned. I mean, he yes. was right. beat. The dad was. Right. And he no, was going to get his daughter? Yes. He was getting mm. his daughter out of that house. And he couldn't get any assistance. Mm. Neighbors were calling constantly, saying, you need to send 911 over here. They said, it's not a, an emergency. we got more priorities. You know, I mean, just like you said, there's no excuse for ignorance. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, I think it's one thing to be ignorant because you didn't know. Right. But it's another thing to continue to ignore it after you know right. what happened, you know? Wow. I, I got to ask you this. You know, we, we talk about our, our girls, our, our young girls, and I want to know, because I have a son too, mm -hmm. you know, um, have you have you seen or did you know of any young boys that were subjected yes. to the same things? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of times um, the boys would be separated the boys would be trafficked to pedophiles up to the age of 12. When they're 12 and over, they teach them to groom the girls. Or they teach them to groom other boys if they're gay. Okay, okay. so let me understand. They would grab the young boys also. They yes. would basically pimp them out. Yes. 
I'm, I'm thinking to other men. Mm-hmm. And then after they reach a certain age, then they teach them how to go and get yes more girls or, or boys, boys exactly to be. I trapped. mean, just like at the book Pimpology, Pim and Ken even said his dad taught him how to be a pimp at twelve. Mm. He was twelve years old when he learned about the pimping world. What? That's sad. Mm-hmm. That is real sad, you know, and that's also scary. It is. Yeah. You know, it's, it's extremely scary because, you know, in this, man. In this day's society, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's very crazy. And it you is. have to protect your kids. At and, all times. And boys are less likely to report it because of the male stigmatism that they feel. They feel emasculated. They feel mm. like they failed ten times more than how a girl feels. Mm. Wow. How were you able to survive? How were you able... I mean, this is a... a how were you able to survive? To be honest, I... First, I have to give it up to God. Mm-hmm. That I am a Christian, and I have to give it up to God because mm. without... Him, I don't think I'd be here today. Mm. Uh, the other thing is, um, sometimes I have to laugh at things mm. because something can be so atrocious that you're just like, man, when is it going to end? Mm-hmm. You know, um, I have to, there are moments I have my own cynicism, mm. you know, um, but. One of the things that I do is I have, I created a healthy balance. Hmm. Um, One of the things, um, because of my diagnosis of being borderline personality disassociation, Mm -hmm. I took a class called Dialectic Behavioral Therapy. Okay. It teaches me to do yoga, Hmm. to get into things that I enjoy that will help me um, vent healthy ways. Hmm. Back in the day, if you knew me and I was went to some fast food chain and someone cut me, I'd be like, excuse me, you just cut in front of me. Mm-hmm. You know, now I'm just like, oh, okay, they just cut in front of me. Mm-hmm. Because what I do is even though I'm angry inside, mm-hmm. I actually take boxing. Do you? It. I love it. I love it. All right. Oh. My idol is Layla Ali. Is that right? I have her picture, and Indeed. I'm just like in my <laughs> <laughs> boxing gloves right, on, right. and I just punched right. a bag. Mm-hmm. Um, I love music. Mm-hmm. Music really empowers me. Mm-hmm. And um, and there are some music that people will be shocked to hear me listen to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's some of the music you listen to? I, I had to admit, I love Tupac. Uh oh. Okay. I okay. love Tupac. Me against right. the world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and my favorite is Ambitions of a Rider. <laughs> okay. Uh oh. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. So when I want to feel like I want to get back into the day, yeah. I right. just listen to that music and drive around. Uh huh. Right. You know, to yes. make, to kind of brush off that urge. Mm hmm. You know, instead right. of going back into clubs, getting high, getting mm. drunk, mm. you know, I find alternative ways to be healthy. Mm hmm. That's, That's good. All right. Yes. That is good. good. Very good. Uh, I, I wanna. It's a couple things I wanna get in real quick. Okay. Okay. How did you gain the uh, experience or the opportunity to have your story brought to the big screen? Actually, they approached me. Really? Yes. Um, after I was on Montel mm-hmm. and some of the other shows, CNBC, MSNBC, they found me in one of the articles. Oh. And so the screenwriter called me up and said, I want to do a movie on your story. So I'm like, sure. He said, send me your story. And I said, in three pages. He was like, um, I'm going to need more than this. <laughs> Just a little bit more. <laughs> exactly. He right. said, what you need to write is details how it felt, how it felt to the touch. So I called my psychiatrist and said, yeah, I need a double dose of value with alcohol. <laughs> right. At that time, I told my boyfriend, you want to stay away from me. I'm going to be a very angry woman because <laughs> I'm tapping right. up these wounds. Right. And, um, but I, didn't, I never thought it would come to fruition. Mm. And then that's 2006 when we mm-hmm. started it. Oh wow! Three years later, two thousand nine, he calls me. I says, "I'm done with it." And I'm like, "Okay, what do we do next?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Then in 2011, they called me and they said, guess what, Jamie Chung's playing you. And I'm like, oh, okay, I got to look her up. Right, right. <laughs> like, thank you. Let me see who this is. Exactly. <laughs> right. So when I found out it was Hangover 2 star, yes, Jamie Chung, also she plays in Man in the Iron Fist by oh, Roz. Right. Okay. That was directed by Roz. Mm-hmm. Lead role was uh, Russell Crowe. Okay. And it's a, a kung fu movie as uh-huh. well. Um she plays in there, Grown mm-hmm. Ups 2. Mm-hmm. She also plays in the new miniseries ABC, mm-hmm. um, Once Upon a Time. Oh, she that's plays hot. plays Mulan. Oh, that's hot. Yes. That is great. Very great. So did you have any any input, or was it you saw it when everybody else saw it, like the premiere? No, I got to be a part-time consultant. Okay, okay. Um, I wanted to be on the set more often, but because it's a low-budget film, Mm -hmm. they would have to keep flying me out. So a lot of times we had to do it over the phone. Over the phone. Yes. But when people see the movie, the part where Matt O'Leary says, 5 by 5 is Asian, 5 by 6 is... I was the one who inputted that. Mm -hmm. Because when... Rick Phillips originally showed me the script. Mm-hmm. He said, we're going to have Asians be like like sushi and blacks be like chocolate. And mm-hmm. it's like, no, you're selling warehouses. You have to match it with that. So when the cops call, they don't know what you're really selling. Oh, gotcha. You know, if you ever see the movie Traffic with Don Sheen mm-hmm. and um, Michael Douglas. Mm-hmm. Right. You should see that. It actually portrays, but that's on a drug trafficking. Mm. I want people to realize that one thing I was happy about this film, it Mm. wasn't about the sex trade. It was about the corruption. Right. That's right. When you say the corruption, you know, because um, I, I did read, I did pay attention a little bit. You know, that you had gotten yourself to the point of, of being a madam, yes. right? So how, how did that happen? What was your psyche when, when that transition took place from being being trafficked, if I'm, if I'm saying this right, mm-hmm. to becoming a madam? When my thoughts of becoming a madam was mainly, here is my intentions. I'm going to rank up. I'm going to learn the routines and find a loophole to get out. Mm. That was my intention. Mm-hmm. But what I didn't expect to see, Mm -hmm. when I ranked up, I started seeing politicians shaking hands to each other. Mm. We would have these banquets. I mean, very echelon banquets. Mm. But there would be all these hits that you would never see on the news. Wow. They would have these uh, drug trafficking, uh, weapon trafficking, um, all these front for businesses, like private... um, clinics that don't take insurance Mm. these are things you want to check out wow you know those are those shady businesses i'm not saying all of them are Mm -hmm. but be very leery Mm -hmm. you know you have an acupuncture that opens 24 hours and all of a sudden you only see men coming in there Mm -hmm. from 11 p.m through 6 Mm a.m you know these are things you want to check out Uh, one of the things i will say one of my I call them hunters. Mm -hmm. These men that bought me, or these monsters that bought me, one of them was actually a uh, ex-governor of one of the states that I used to live in. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. all I'm going to say on that one. Okay. (laughs) I don't want to hit out on me. But that's how echelon these men are. Mm. Because they feel like I have the power, I got the money, and I can do whatever I want. It's that God... Mentality. Wow, that's crazy. Yes, I saw a clip of the. Uh, I noticed that the trailer for the movie like had over six million hits yes. to it. And but one of the clips I saw, it looked like one of the men that was involved with the human trafficking also was one of the men that was consulting the police. Yes, I was like, what? And he was telling them, who are you looking for? He said, you're looking for, for everybody. everybody. Like, Joker, wasn't you the one? <laughs> <laughs> like, wasn't you the one that was over there saying you got to learn how to? Oh, my mm-hmm. God. What, do you have any, you know, can you give us as parents, as mothers, as teachers, counselors, can you give us some, some tips, you know, um, that we can look for that can help us as far as, uh, you know, spot this type of behavior? One of the things you can also check out, polarisproject.org. You can click on your state that you live in, and it will give you some technical assistance. Can you give me that again? What is it? Polaris, 
P-O-L-A-R-I-S Project dot org. Okay. And then there's other one that you might want to check out called My Footprint, My Slavery Footprint. If you do that questionnaire, it'll tell you how many slaves are literally working in your house. What? What? By the type of products you buy. How many products are slave uh, workers? People don't realize that a lot of our coffees are also from slave workers from Africa, mm. from China, from other places. And um, I don't want to say the names of different companies, right, right. but the reason why human trafficking, even the sex trafficking, may sound like it's one tenth of the problem, but it actually contributes to all the other aspects of human trafficking. Mm. If we only take care of the sex trafficking, we're not taking care of the problem. Mm. Because even with kids that are being used as slave labor Mm -hmm. can also be used as sexual commodities to Mm. organ trafficking. There are kids, there was, um, if you check out the book Illicit by Moses Name, it's N-A-I-M-E. You can check him out on Amazon. Read that book. There's a chapter in there that he wrote about African American kids in Brooklyn, New York, that were runaway kids, right. and that they were used for organ trafficking because they were considered systematic children. Nobody would care about them. What? Yes. Mm, mm, mm. This is why we need to stick together, from teachers to church pastors to community leaders mm-hmm. and even parents, because mm-hmm. right now these traffickers are laughing at us when we say, "I don't want to hear it." They like good. Exactly. That's what they love to hear. Mm. That's what they love to hear. You know, I always tell people, I said, even if you were to drive across town and you knew that town had a low rate for traffic or low rate for car crashes, mm-hmm. would you still tell your kids not to wear a seatbelt? And they said, no, this is the same thing. Mm. We need to seatbelt our children right. with the knowledge of human trafficking. We need to seat about our church, our school, our community. Mm-hmm. Right. That's the most important thing. Right. Wow. Yeah, that's deep. This has been a, a phenomenal interview. It's, it's so many. Look, when you come back, when you coming back? When I'm, you come back. <laughs> in February. <laughs> all right. We have a standing appointment. Okay. <laughs> February, when you come back, you need to be right here. Yes. Because there are so many more things. There's more people tuning in. I'm seeing. Thank you all for tuning in. Those that are watching. <laughs> Um, you know, it's just so many things that we can talk about. Golly, I feel like I'm going to slide in one more. I know you got to go. <laughs> I'm going to slide this in. You know, what do you want people to come away with? After those that are, are listening right now and those that are watching right now, what do you want them to come away with after hearing your story? What I want them to come away with is even if they can't wrap their head around it, but do not be afraid to research it. Mm-hmm. Look for it. One of the biggest things that they need to also look at, how many sex offenders are in their community? Mm. If we can't talk about trafficking, let's talk about the sex offenders in our community. Right. Because as long as they exist, so does human trafficking. Because they become the buyers of these children. Mm. How can people follow you, contact you, know exactly what's going on, where you're speaking next? Can you give all your information, please? Um, I will be speaking next in also Las Vegas as well as Central Florida. That won't be until February. I'm still waiting on um, speaking gigs in January. Mm-hmm. Um, I may be able to speak out in Ohio in January. You no, know, Ohio is where I'm from. Really? Yeah, we're, we're, we're actually, both. We're both from Ohio. Right, yeah. I was actually trafficked in Galena, Ohio. Are you mm. sick? See? It was at a Galena. trailer park that we were taken to. A trailer park. Wow. And so, but if people want to know more about me, you can find me on Twitter, L I L A Z N, as in Nancy, G R L 75. Mm-hmm. Facebook, look up Chong Kim. It's facebook.com slash C Kim, C K I M 75. Mm-hmm. And if you want to know about, more about the film, Go to Eden the Film, no spaces, dot com. Mm. Eden the Film, 
and then click on story and you'll see more about me. Right. And I'll probably share a post on Bianca Burwell's Facebook Indeed. with my information mm-hmm. so people want to know more. And you can also check out my blog, faceoftears.wordpress.com. Wow. What do you think, honey? Phenomenal. <laughs> Man, it's, it's an eye-opener. An it eye is. Opener. It is an eye-opener. You know, um, gosh, I, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go and check out all the sites that, you, that you've that you given us, all the things that you've shared. You know, I'm almost hoping your, your, your ride ain't outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, almost, I'm almost hoping. <laughs> Be like, oh, we got five more minutes. Good, <laughs> you know. But but I know you got a, a, a schedule that you have to keep, and and you know, I, I just I can't tell you enough how I appreciate the movie. Where can they can go and get that movie on Wh- Netflix, Amazon, and also Redbox. They can also download it on iTunes as well. Oh. You can order it via online at Walmart or Best Buy as well. Cool. Yeah. This is something that I think all of the, I, I, I haven't seen the movie yet, just the trailer, but I think all of the, the, the elementary schools, the, the yes. you know, middle schools, high schools, colleges, everybody needs to know about human trafficking. Yes. They, they, the kids need to know, that the parents need to know, you know, um, all of our, our leaders in the community, they need to know so that we all can help one another. I would hate exactly. to think that I've been in a situation where I've seen something happening and walked straight past it and just didn't know. Exactly. And I want to let people know there is no sex scenes. There is no rape scene in my movie. The only reason why it's rated R is mainly because there's a lot of cuss words. But what do you expect traffickers to say? Fiddlesticks? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not at all. Exactly. There's one scene that's kind of gruesome, yeah. but it's only one. It's, when you see it, you'll understand what mm-hmm. I mean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> at the theater, when I showed it, everyone stood up and was like, yay! And I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm glad they approved. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah, sitting there like, huh, oh, here comes the part, here comes the part. Exactly. I appreciate you so much for taking the time out to uh, talk with us today in February. Yes. You yes. will be back here. Yes. We'll be looking for you. Yes. yes. I'll yes. make sure you have all my personal information so you can contact me and say, Bianca, I'm, I'm coming in. Exactly. All I right. will. Cool beans. <laughs> Thank Y'all you. Y'all keep it locked right here on the Bianca Burwell Show. We'll be back after this. Thank you so much.